Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I want to take a look at features coming in Godot 4.4. The latest dev snapshot has shown some game-changing additions. I can't wait to explore some of them with you. We'll take a look at six standout updates that the Godot team has been working really hard on. This video was inspired by an article written by Tadia Screws over on the Godot Dev 4 Snapshot 4.4 Dev 6 page. But I also added some of my favorite picks as well. But first, before we go any further, let's quickly talk about what a Dev Snapshot actually is. A development snapshot is like an early sneak peek, so to speak, of the next Godot release. It includes all the cool new features that are being worked on, but keep in mind, it's not fully stable yet. The goal here is to let the community test these features, find bugs, and provide feedback to the Godot team. This helps ensure that the stable release is polished and ready for production. It clearly states on the website, while engine maintainers try their best to ensure that each preview snapshot and release candidate is stable, this is by definition a pre-release piece of software. Be sure to make frequent backups or use a version control system such as Git to preserve your projects in case of corruption or loss of data. So if you're feeling adventurous, you can grab the dev snapshot and try it out for yourself. Just remember, it's not recommended for serious production projects since things still could change or even break. Just think of it as your playground for testing the future of Godot. All right, so let's break this down. During the video, you will see a code like this, gh-xxxxx. What does gh.xxxxx mean? Well, the gh part stands for GitHub, which is a popular platform for managing code and collaborating on open source projects like Godot. It's where developers track bugs, discuss features, and contribute code changes. Now the number XXXXX is like an ID tag. It uniquely identifies a specific issue or pull request in the GitHub repository. Think of it like a reference number in a filing system. For example, if you're reading a Godot changelog or dev blog and you see something like GH-99506 it's basically a shorthand that points you to the exact discussion or contribution related to that change, which in this case is under the 2D section and follows the discussion, change how multi-section scale applies to canvas item. If you're curious about the details, you can actually look it up on GitHub. Just go to the Godot engine repository and use the number to find the related issue or pull request or you can just click on the link on the dev snapshot page that corresponds to the issue you want to take a look at. It's a neat way to keep track of what's happening under the hood and it's super useful for developers who want to follow the progress of a specific change or report bugs. First up, we've got the new camera 3D preview in the inspector. If you've ever had trouble aligning your camera 3D node or needed to constantly play your scene to check the camera view, this one's for you. Now you can see what the camera sees directly in the inspector. It's a real time saver, especially when you're dealing with large complex scenes or cinematic shots. Next up is a small but super useful tweak. Collision Shape 3D Debug Color Customization if you've ever had a crowded 3D scene with multiple collision shape 3D nodes, you know how hard it can be to differentiate them. Now you can set custom debug colors, making it much easier to spot and organize your collision shapes. It's a quality of life feature that I think all devs will love. Thanks to first time contributor, Batty Bovine for implementing this much requested proposal. Let's now talk about an exciting enhancement in GDScript, improved auto-completion for methods. This update significantly boosts our coding efficiency by providing more accurate method suggestions as we type. It minimizes errors and streamlines the development process, making coding in Godot even more enjoyable. This improvement was implemented by a contributor known as LazyRabbit2001 on GitHub. Their efforts has made coding in Godot smoother and even more intuitive. 
And listen to this. Let's talk audio. Godot 4.4 will introduce runtime WAV file loading, which means you can now load WAV files dynamically during gameplay. This opens up a lot of possibilities, especially for games with modding support or dynamically generated content. Imagine loading custom sound effects without needing to recompile your project. Pretty awesome, right? This was made possible by first-time contributor Sherry, who implemented this long-requested support for runtime loading of WAV files. Another exciting update is extending curved domains outside of 0 and 1. I mean really, we all got used to it, but curves are limited to a strict range. But with this new feature, you can extend them as far as needed. This gives us more flexibility for things like animations, shaders, and procedural systems. It's a great addition for anyone who works with curves extensively in their projects. Thanks to Ocean, who finally got their implementation of this feature merged. And guess what? I really saved the best for last. Now, let's talk about my favorite update in Godot's visual shader. The addition of linear to sRGB and sRGB to linear functions in the color func node. These functions are essential for converting color values between linear space and sRGB. This is particularly important because linear and sRGB color spaces handle brightness and color differently, affecting how visuals appear in your projects. With the linear to sRGB function, you can convert linear color values to sRGB, ensuring that colors are displayed correctly on screens that use the sRGB color space. Conversely, the sRGB to linear function allows you to convert sRGB values back to linear, which is very useful for accurate color computations and lighting calculations within the engine. This enhancement was implemented by GitHub contributor Terrapod00. Thanks to their contribution, it's more straightforward for developers to manage color spaces with individual shader editor enhancing both workflow, efficiency, and the visual fidelity of projects. And there you have it, six great reasons to look forward to Godot 4.4. Have you been keeping up to date with what goes on behind the scenes with Godot development? What are some of your favorite updates? If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We discussed a lot today. Core topics with no gimmicks. I do hope this video was helpful. If you liked the video, why not give it a like? As always, subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when I upload another video. And speaking of my other videos, why not check out another one of my videos here? This has been DRAGO Games.